Okay, so our genetics how-to of the day are dihybrid crosses. So these are genetics problems that deal with two traits at the same time. Monohybrid crosses from our earlier video was only one trait, um, figuring out what the potential offspring could look like. This time we're looking at two traits. That's where the dye in dihybrid comes from. So today we're gonna look at interpreting and then we're, we will go through an example as well. Here is our strange example that I made up off the top of my head. Humans have weird feet. Hairy toes are dominant to hairless toes and having a long second toe or a second toe longer than your big toe is recessive to having a second toe shorter than the big toe. From that information, we need to answer the following questions. What genotype or genotypes can a person with hairy, long second toes have? So this means hairy and long second toes. If someone is heterozygous for both traits, what is their genotype? We don't need to do a Punnett square to figure out any of these answers. This is all about, can we interpret the problem we were given? So let's take a look. Hairy toes are dominant, so they are big H. That means hairless toes are going to be little h because they're recessive. Having a long second toe is recessive and that's an L there. Um, I always do a little loopy L because it helps me remember that it's lowercase. And then having a second toe shorter than the big toe would be dominant and I'll give that a capital L. Make sure you name each of your alleles. If it's recessive, give it a lowercase letter and if it's dominant, give it an uppercase letter. Make sure your letters are completely different from each other. Again, same letter, but different looking. My H's don't look the same and neither do my L's. This way I can tell the difference between my upper and lower cases. Now I need to look for hairy and long second toes. Here we go. A person with hairy toes is dominant. So they can have either one dominant allele or both dominant alleles. So I can have either H, H, or big H, big H. Those would both be somebody with hairy toes. Now to look at long second toes. If I want them to have long second toes, those are recessive. So for them to show that genotype, they need to have both recessive alleles. So they're gonna need to be little l, little l only. Now I have to combine them because I can't leave my, my answer like this, it doesn't make sense yet. So I'm going to go ahead and pair them up. Somebody could be big H, little h, little l, little l, or they could also be big H, big h, little l, little l. Let's check it. Big H, little h, that means hairy, absolutely. Little l, little l, long second toes. Yes, because it's recessive. Big H, big h, again, still hairy toes because they're dominant. Little l, little l, long second toes. Absolutely, they both check out. Those are both of my possibilities. If you did any other combination, you would have either hairless toes or you'd have shorter um, second toes. So it wouldn't work out any other way. These are the only possible genotypes that we have. Next up, if someone is heterozygous for both traits, what is their genotype? Here's our key word, heterozygous. Remember, hetero means different. Whereas homozygous means the same, heterozygous means different. That means we're looking at different alleles for both traits. So for them to be heterozygous for hairy toes, they need a big H and a little h. For them to be heterozygous for the length of their second toe, they need a big L and a little l. This is their genotype because they are heterozygous, different cases, so lowercase and uppercase, for both traits. We can check that. Dominant, recessive, dominant, recessive. Perfect. Now that we've interpreted some dihybrid crosses, let's take a look at an actual example. This is going to be kind of a long example. Um, I made up a fictional dog breed for you. Remember, these are not actual um, crosses that you could do in genetics. These are just showing you examples of how to do this type of problem. So in a fictional dog breed, the Jacobson Re Retriever, that is my fictional dog breed, Ears that are floppy are dominant to normal ears. Normal ears are kind of pointed up. I like floppy dog ears, I think they're cute. Curly fur on the ears is also dominant, or big C, to straight fur on the ears. What potential ears do the puppies of a dog with normal ears and straight fur and a dog that is heterozygous for both traits have? 
let's slow down and break this down. There's a lot of information here. You've got all four of your alleles. You've got floppy ears as a capital F, normal ears as a lowercase f. Normal ears are recessive. Curly fur is a capital C. I put the line underneath to remind myself that it's capital and therefore it's dominant. Straight fur is a lowercase c. The c's look the same if you go quickly. So I made sure anytime I do a dominant c, I put a line underneath it so that I remember that it's a capital letter. Now I have to start by looking at my parent genotypes, just like we do for a monohybrid cross. So our first parent here, a dog with normal ears and straight fur. Let's take a look. Normal ears are recessive. So for them to have normal ears, they need to have both little f's, recessive ears. They have straight fur, which is also recessive. So they're also going to have two little c's. Notice I made my c's smaller than the f's. If I had made my C really big, it would have been tough for me to tell if it was dominant or recessive. So make it very obvious to yourself when you write them. For parent number two, a dog that is heterozygous for both traits. Again, that key here, hetero, meaning different. So we need to have one of each allele. So for floppy or normal ears, they're going to be heterozygous. So they're going to have a capital F and a little f, meaning that they're going to have floppy ears because that big F is dominant, so that's what we'll show through. If they're heterozygous for curly fur, they're going to have one of each, so I do one big C and one little C. Again, I made it obvious, and then I put an underline to remind myself that it's a big C. Now we've got it going on here. Here's the next thing we need to do. We are going to separate out the alleles so that there's one letter for each Punnett square. And by that I mean one Punnett square will have all the Fs in it, and one Punnett square will have all the C's in it. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to take the little f's from parent one and then the big F little f from parent two and put that in my first Punnett square. From here, I'm going to cross it just like I would any other Punnett square. These on the side go across, these on the top go down. So this big F comes across, this little f comes across, this little f here comes down, and this little f comes down as well. Now I've got it filled in. I will do the same thing for the c's in my second Punnett square. I've got two little c's here from parent number one, and then I've got a big c and a little c from parent number two. Again, I made that very obvious. This is where I see most of my students have problems. They don't make this obvious, and so they get all little c's and then get confused we'll cross it the same way. The big C comes across, the little C comes across as well. The little C here comes down, and this little C comes down. Now it's easy to tell which is big and which is little. Here we go. What potential ears do the puppies of a dog with normal ears and straight fur and a dog that is heterozygous for both traits have? Now we have lots of combinations we could go for here. We can take a look. So their dogs will have either big F, little f, or little f, little f ears. So they could be, big F, little f would be floppy. Little f, little f would be normal. So they could be floppy or normal. And over here, big C, little c. Big C is dominant, which is curly fur. So those two puppies are gonna have curly fur. So they could be curly or little c, little c. Those are gonna be straight fur because they're both recessive. So they could have curly or straight. Let's do an example here and figure out how many of these dogs are worth the percent would be if they had floppy and curly hair. So let's do it for that. So how many puppies or what percent of the puppies will have floppy curly hair on their ears? Or floppy ears, I should say. So if we look at the ones that have floppy ears, that's dominant. So we have one, two that have floppy ears. I'm gonna put that down here. So they've got two out of four that have floppy ears. Now, if we want the ears to also have curly fur, we also have to look here. This has curly fur, this has curly fur. Again, a two out of four. Now it's time to notice that I have this X in the middle of my two Punnett squares. That's because you are going to multiply your two possibilities. This will give you the total possibility of having a puppy with floppy, floppy ears and have curly fur on those ears. 
So we can multiply across. Two times two is four. This is where everyone trips up. Four times four is 16. You don't add, you multiply going across. Four divided by 16, that can simplify to one over four. So if we're doing this in a percentage, we're going to say 25% will have floppy ears with curly fur on those ears. Now you can figure out any other combination if you'd like. If you want floppy ears with straight fur, you would multiply again by two out of four because you've got these two possibilities down here that have straight fur. If you wanted normal ears with curly fur, you'd just take the two normal ear down here, two out of four, by curly, two curly over here. You're gonna get the same answer every time pretty much, um, but that's just due to what we put on here. So the keys that we have for dihybrid hybrid crosses, make sure that you write out the parent genotypes first. You can't do anything until you do that. So search in your question to find the parent genotypes. Sometimes they're given to you and that's really, really nice. The second thing to do is pick one Punnett square for one letter and one Punnett square for the other letter. Notice I have F's all in this same Punnett square and C's all in this Punnett square. Do not mix them. If you mix them, you're gonna run into some trouble. The third thing is when you're trying to figure out which of the offspring will have each trait, you need to multiply those possibilities together. You need to multiply them, don't add. And that's pretty much it for dihybrid crosses. Please like, subscribe, and comment, um, and take a look at some of the other videos in the genetics help section of my website. And I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you later.